Greetings. We have another update from the Columbia CUSD four district offices. As we've come to really understand, education is a huge pillar in our society. We've all been through it. It's a common experience that binds us. We understand what it's about. It's where we learn about community. It's where we have our relationships, which are really key to proper educations. In March, schooling was interrupted. It was with the shelter in place uh, order from the governor, it was halted. And as we returned to school and developed the plans to return to school, um, we've realized schooling is going to be changed. As we developed this plan, we, we knew we had to create a system that keeps all of our students, all of our faculty, all of our staff safe. We needed to look at what was needed. Looking at the needs, social distancing has to occur. That's not possible with 100% attendance. Breaking the students into two groups was necessary in order to give that distance between our students. Wearing masks, it's mandatory. It's going to be necessary. I understand that they're uncomfortable, but in the classrooms where we are still close together, even with half the students, masks are going to be mandatory. Daily disinfecting. Buses are going to be sprayed with disinfectant. Desks are being wiped down. All of this takes extra time, but we're factoring in how to do that the best during the school day. Finally, these plans needs to be flexible. Flexible to move in and out of any issues that might come up. Given those needs of ensuring everybody's safe and secure, we started to develop our plan. We knew the importance for teachers and students to build relationships. People don't care what you know until they know that you care. We also understood that teaching how to work together safely is as important as learning the work. That is redefining schools. Our children and their children will be taught differently. Collaborative work is still important, but how do you do that in a socially distant and a remote environment? Ultimately, we need to develop three plans, an all-in-person, which is most like what we know schooling to be, but it's still going to be considerably different, a hybrid model where there is some in-person days and some remote days, and an all-remote learning model, which is the least like what schooling used to be. We will most likely experience each and every one of these scenarios this year. Our goal is to be all in person every day. The reality is, is we'll most likely have times where we're going to be all remote. It's going to depend on what happens with the virus and with the spread of the virus. With that information, we felt like a good way for us to start not sure how schooling is going to affect the spread of the virus in a hybrid model. That will allow us, after a course of time, to be able to go all in or all remote or stay in the hybrid model. This took a lot of time and thought. So one of the questions may be, why the hybrid to start? The biggest component is social distancing. We cannot do adequate social distancing with 100% in attendance each day. We are may want to adhere to the six foot, but with a three foot minimum. So dividing the student population in half will help us achieve this. The other big component is allowing teachers to build relationships with their students. Last year, when we went into remote learning, those students and teachers already had a relationship and their peers had a classroom relationship. We want to start the school year off with an opportunity for in-person to build those relationships K-12. In addition, the hybrid model is kind of in the middle, which allows us to be able to shift between fully remote and fully in-person easily. Fridays, we are going to be fully remote for everyone. And the reason for this is it allows our teachers to connect with every remote student. It allows them to plan for the week ahead, both in-person lessons and remote lessons 
and it allows us to provide professional development for our teachers that will be much needed for this new learning environment. Another question I know you have is what will remote learners be doing while the other group is in person? All of our teachers will be both remote and in-person teachers. Of course, we have a group of students that will be opting for fully remote and our teachers will provide for that. But the people who are doing hybrid will have an opportunity to be working on assignments, watching videos that their teachers put together, and they will have an opportunity to collaborate with their peers in a virtual environment. I know a question is, is why are we shorting the in-person days? And the purpose is twofold. The first is to allow our teachers at the end of the day to upload all the necessary materials for the remote students for the following day. In addition, it allows for our teachers to connect with our remote students in an in-person manner virtually. Many of you may wonder how we arrived at the decision to have Friday fully remote. One of the main factors is that this allows our teachers to see all in-person students before they send them off to work independently. Monday and Tuesday's group, Wednesday and Thursday's group will have an opportunity for direct instruction and ask questions before they're sent off for an assignment to work independently. If we were to choose Wednesday, which was a suggestion, it would mean that a group of students had never even contacted their teacher prior to working independently. The best case scenario for our students is the Friday. In addition, it will allow our teachers to engage with every student uh, in a remote environment on Friday. In addition, they will also be able to participate in professional development that will be much needed in order to be able to teach both in person and in a remote setting. Details on registration. Registration will open this Monday, July 20th, and will close August 3rd. New enrollments and anyone needing help with registration needs to contact their building office to arrange an appointment. We will no longer be having in-person registration days. You will be asked to identify whether your child will be fully remote or participating in the hybrid option. This is a nine-week commitment. Plan will be evaluated each nine weeks and adjusted. You can change your educational placement decision each nine weeks. We are pleased to announce that all students K through 12 in the district will be receiving a Chromebook this year. This will be an annual loan. Students will be asked to make a one-time purchase of a district approved case. This will be for the student to keep. If a replacement is needed, another one can be purchased from the office. There will be agreements in the registration process that you will need to read and sign off as a parent. Here are some details on the calendar and some logistics for the back to school. August 20th is now our first day of school. This is changed from August 19th. A new calendar will be adopted by the board at a special meeting on July 29th. We will be sure to communicate this with everyone soon after. Our in-person hours will be different than a typical school day. Eagle View hours are tentatively 8 o'clock to 1.30. Park View hours are 7.50 to 1.20. CMS hours are 7.55 to 12.35. And CHS hours are 7.45 to 12.25. I need to emphasize that these may change depending upon enrollment and bus needs. We will let you know as soon as we can if something changes. Lunches will be provided for elementary, they will eat those at the school, and middle school and high school students will have an option to grab and go for lunches. I cannot emphasize enough the need for us all to be prepared for change. In our last video, we told you that we wanted to emphasize in-person learning, and that is still true. However, we will not be fully in-person, and this could change. The health of our community, good or bad, influences our decisions. In addition, the governor or ISBE regulations are known to change with little to no warning. So please be patient, and we will notify you as soon as we know of a change. Please understand 
this year is one of significant change. No one likes, likes change. Things are different. Schooling has been a place for our children. They're home away from home. Schooling has been a place for them to have healthy ways to explore the arts, healthy ways to explore the athletics, to meet friends, to find their lifelong hobbies. We understand schooling is important. I mean, how families interact with school during the school year and what they have to do over summer vacation, family life is different with that. It's because schools are important. We understand this. Our goal is to return children to the schools, but we have to do it in a safe manner. Um, this change in schooling, having a lot more remote learning, um, it's going to take professional development. That's going to take time in the day. Our teachers are going to have to learn how to teach in person and teach remotely at the same time. They're going to need time to build up video libraries. All of this professional development is going to enrich our educational experiences, but for this year, it's going to take time, hence the shortened days. Um, we're also always going to have an option for all remote. Families, there's some medical issues that students cannot be safely at school. We understand this, and there will always be an all remote option. Um, we want those students to be included in the classroom environment with their classmates as much as possible. And we're going to be better and better at doing that every year as we move forward. Um, we are going to continue the Eagle Zone. So when your child is at school in kindergarten through fifth grade, they will have a place after school. Again, we're going to handle the cleaning and all those other cares. We're trying to make this as much like last year and the years before as we can with the safety concerns. Um, this is a lot of information. Uh, we're going to have more granular information regarding each building by the building principles as we move forward and we get closer to the school year. But we wanted to make sure we had the broad strokes explained as we're ready for registration.